Chef Shea here. Today we're going to be making ribs. We're going to make them in the Dutch oven. It's actually a camp oven, but we're going to make them in the Dutch oven in the oven. Stick around. Okay guys, the first thing, now these should be fall off the bone when we get done with them. The first thing you're going to want to do, get you some paper towels here. And all this membrane, all this membrane here, you're going to take that off. This I cut off, it's a bunch of fat. I am going to leave in the pan and cook. And this can be Bruno's food, or you can leave it on. Normally I do, but that's a lot of it, so I figured... Bruno might want some. So we're just going to get this started first. You want to peel this membrane off. And I, I do it every time. Every time I cook ribs, I just go ahead and do this. Um, sometimes it can be finicky, but just stay with it and you can, you can get all that off of there because that's going to help make these ribs nice. Now I'm going to have to cut them in half. It's going to make them nice and tender. But find different spots you can peel in. Different spots you may be able to get a hold of better like that. Okay. I have started it. Let's take a knife and smaller knife than this works better, but you get the idea. You know, get that started and just peel all that stuff off there. That stuff, it's okay. It doesn't hurt to leave it on. Um, I have left it on before. I mean, it's not bad. Uh, they just don't fall. They just won't uh, fall off the bone. If that's what you're looking for if it doesn't matter if they do or not you can leave it on okay see now we got it started I also washed this off and I just pat dried it you know with a with a paper towel and just pat dried it there now a lot of people some people will take all the fat off I I prefer to leave it on again it's up to you it is healthier if you take it all off but I find it removes some of the flavor so there we go <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to cut these in half to fit my pan I may have to do it in thirds which I think I will I just get in between the bones just cut it right down through like that let's try here uh, I want to get me a meat cleaver for cutting through areas like this but this knife is sharp this is that has seen on TV knife I have never sharpened it and I've had it for a couple years and this is my go-to knife okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some mustard out and I'm going to put okay. well, that's a nice nice hunk of meat there boy alright so I'm going to put some mustard on this and then I'll put some seasoning on and I'll show you what seasoning I'm going to use hang tight okay so now we've got our mustard here and shake it up very good mustard here we'll get in all these nooks and crannies I've got some vegetables already chopped I'm not going to keep showing you guys that because to me that's kind of boring if you want a recipe you're wanting to get into it this is my recipe like I said a lot of people if you do something they'll say oh you shouldn't do that it uh, it doesn't come out right well if it tastes fine to you it came out right <laughs> you know what I mean 
that's the way I look at it. Let me get my little brush here. Uh, I'm not going to be using barbecue sauce in this today. Like I said, we got to watch the sugar for Monkey and her mom. Um, now there is a barbecue sauce they can use that's less in sugar and whatnot. But this would take a really even a lot of that. So I am going to use some Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire. Everyone finds it hard to say. But to me, if you even get close, we know what you're talking about, so don't worry about it, you know? So Alright, there's that. And we're also going to be putting a beer in it. She got me Canadian Pilsner. Because she said it doesn't matter. And I'm like, no. Because uh, I'm just going to be cooking with it. <laughs> She's like, did you read that? I'm like, no. It's Labatt Blue. And then I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's Canadian. Because <laughs> she's Canadian, you know. So I thought that was pretty funny. She always, we always razz each other about it. <laughs> okay, so just going to set that there. Uh, let me get my seasonings out and we'll start seasoning this okay so I kind of moved you over a little bit different angle so I can get in here a little bit better <coughs> the seasonings I'm going to be using steak seasoning I'll, I'll use all that up because I go through a lot of that I'm going to be using garlic powder now you can by all means um, use regular garlic you know fresh cloves of garlic which I usually put in the bottom of the pan crush some and rub it on but I also like this garlic powder. And uh, so that's what I'm going to be using today. I do have regular garlic in there. But I just thought I'd, I'd like to change things up every once in a while. We just got our seasoning salt. Which is, of course, Lowry's. It's just, it's whatever you prefer. That's that's kind of my favorite, my go-to. And it's reasonable. It's cheap. Does that look blurry to you guys? Uh, I just got some sea salt here. Paprika and some lemon pepper okay so just gonna and i'm gonna do this on both sides but i'll just show you the one side like i said uh a lot of people will do a 17 to 20 minute video half of it is just seasoning both sides if you see one side then you pretty much know the uh, what the other side's supposed to you know <clears throat> so this off of here there we go all right now our garlic powder I just had her pick that up for me you can put I'm not going to tell you a teaspoon of this and because if you ask me a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper you cannot taste in anything so I'm not gonna I'm just putting it on till it looks good to me you know and um, I know about how much, you know, flavor each one of these are because this is usually what I use unless it calls for something different like Termac or something like that. Then I'll check it. But like I said, it's um, a teaspoon of any kind of seasoning you're not going to taste. I don't care what anybody says. Just put a teaspoon in there. That's more than enough. In my book, if you can't taste it, it wasn't enough. I like to taste every every uh, bit of um, seasoning I have, you know, to where I can say, oh, I can taste the lemon pepper, I can taste the salt, I can taste the pepper. Um, but, like, certain seasonings may take more than others, you know. Like, um, like if, if you're going to be using, like, the crab boil or the slap your mama, stuff which by the way is very excellent stuff um, you're going to want to use less of that because it does not take a whole lot of that put some paprika on here uh, I like to smoke paprika but I've been out and I keep forgetting to pick it up and she always message me I'm leaving the store now do you need anything else I'm like no I'm good <laughs> and then when I start making them like man I want it smoked okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this exact step to the other side and then I'll take you over to the pan and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the pan at the pan <laughs> okay now what I'm going to do is I've got some yellow peppers here I'm going to put in the bottom of this thing I've got some onion I'm just making a bed this is just a small 
just a small um, Dutch oven. Like I said, it's more of a camp oven. Okay, so I'm just going to put some of these in here. And I've got some red pepper. Again, you don't have to put this stuff in there. Make it how you want it. Now, I'm going to put our meat on top of here. I'm going to put... Ooh. I don't know if this is all going to fit. Excuse me. Man. All right, let's see if it'll fit. Yes, it will fit. As long as it'll fit, you'll be fine. I'm going to just... Put a couple more up on here for good measure. Uh, if you're going to be using barbecue sauce, just put each layer, I need a 16 inch, put barbecue sauce on, like put your meat on, put barbecue sauce on, another piece of meat, barbecue sauce, you know what I mean, layer it, uh, or however you want to do it. Again, like, like the salt, a lot of us can't have salt. Um, I say us, I don't know why, but if you can't have salt, I found that that no salt is a great substitute um, for it. It does kind of taste like salt. Nothing's as good as original, but there are alternatives. Okay, now I'm going to get my other stuff and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. Okay, now what I'm going to do, which I don't know of any uh, rib recipe that calls for this, but I got some, I got three boiling cubes here. I'm just gonna just stick them right down in there. I'll put one under here. Those will dissolve. Um, I like a lot of flavor, but I don't like too much. It's kind of like if I go to a barbecue place and I see them really dumping like half a gallon of barbecue sauce on my meat, I'm wondering what are they trying to hide, you know? You really can't taste the meat. Uh, we went to a restaurant one time in Mount Dora uh, monkey and I and uh, ordered the lasagna and I mean it just came out it was just just nothing but spaghetti sauce or lasagna sauce I mean that's all we could taste I, I don't want to do that um, if you like it that way by all means do it that way but you don't have to now this is a I don't know what this is it's a tall boy I don't know how many ounces um, but Okay, this is 24 ounces, which would be two regular cans of beer. So I'm going to put about, oh, about half of this in here. Like I said, if you're worried about alcohol content, do not worry because it will cook out. But if you're still kind of self-conscious about that, some people don't like to have a beer in the house because of past experiences, personal problems, or whatever. Um... Go ahead and get you some N.A. beer, like a Duels, Bush N.A., something like that, and uh, you're, you'll be fine. Or you can just leave it out. Um, you can put, I, I seen a recipe I was watching a little while ago, a guy put um, Dr. Pepper in his. You can put Coca-Cola, whatever. You know, it's your recipe. That's why I'm not giving you, like, certain amounts of seasoning, because you've seen what I put on. Some people might... If, if I say this is what I do, some people might make it to the tea and go, wow, that shaver is full of crap. I really don't like that because it's too much of one thing or another. So you know what you like and, and you know what your taste buds are like. Just uh, kind, of, kind of sample with it and stuff. Um, it does not have to be, you know, perfect. That's why I don't give a lot of, a lot of uh, like teaspoons and stuff like that in my recipes because... That's, to me, a recipe is just, okay, here you go. This is what you, what you can use. This is what you got. Now run with it, you know. It's just kind of a suggestion to me is what any recipe is. Unless it's something like bacon bread. You got to kind of be precise on, on that, you know. But as far as this goes, uh, something like this, seasoning steaks, you don't have to put any seasoning on. If you just want the meat flavor, that is totally up to you. Just use water. Uh... You know, like I said, I, I say it every time, and I, I just, I don't want you to forget, it's your recipe. And, um, you know, and a lot of times you follow the recipe by the book, and you go, man, I really don't like that. Well, just uh, try it again, only use what you want to use, you know what I mean? 
instead of a lot of pepper you don't like pepper well it's probably not a good idea to put it in follow what I'm saying so just leave it out substitute some things now I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees now I'm going to put this in the oven for 300 at 350 degrees for two and a half hours to start and I'll check them and if the bones are real loose then I'll know it's done if not I'll let it go to three hours but yeah this is a long this is uh it, it, it takes long but it doesn't take long to prepare um, so you know you just putting stuff in there and run with it and then you go if it's your first time then you can go, okay, I added a little bit too much seasoning salt or too much pepper, not enough pepper, not enough salt or whatever the case may be. Um, but liquids do flavor it. Uh, you'll get different flavors from, say, a beer to Dr. Pepper uh, to just water. Like I said, I put the beef boiling cubes in there. If you don't have any beef boiling cubes but you want some flavor, try this. Put some chicken boiling cubes in there. It kind of gives it a mix. It gives it a, a little zing to it. It's like, wow. There's something in there your guests will be like, wow, this is amazing. What is it? And then you can say, that's my secret ingredient. So, not a bad beer. Actually, it's pretty smooth. But, so let, into the oven it goes. And I'll see you guys for me in about two and a half to three hours. But for you, it'll just be a second. So don't go away. And uh, we'll be back and we'll see what we got. Okay, guys. It's been three hours. I checked them at two and a half. They were okay, but I thought I'd give them another, another 30 minutes. All right. Let's get our tongs out here. So it's been exactly three hours. Oh, look at that. bones are coming out <coughs> oh nice and tender one. yes all right and the third one yes you can see the bones are coming right out of there now what you can also do you can throw these on the grill for a couple minutes if you want before you cook them but uh, I didn't do that or you can sear them in a pan and here's some of the fat that we had cut off earlier at the beginning that's going to be Bruno's oh, can't give him an onion Okay, now what I'm going to do, put some of these, some of this broth in here in the potatoes. Now these potatoes, <coughs> excuse me, I cooked for about 30 minutes. I just kept adding a little bit of water. I made them kind of soft. I just cut them in thin slices and stirred them quite a bit. These I only checked one time. So... I checked them at two and a half hours exactly and we just pulled them out been about three hours almost exactly um, all right so let me grab a plate here and I think monkey's gonna be itching for a bite of these here let me get you close up in here them nice huh like I said you can brown them first if you want and grab a grab a fork here and a knife wow let me see easier one to cut here this has still got that all that meat back in there See, there's a bone runs through here so far up. Nice. 
Um, what you can also do, get her a piece cut up here. What you can also do is pull the bones out after they're cooked. There's monkey. And you can just have That's just pure good. meat. Look at that. So, I guess monkey's here ready to give it a shot. Chow down time. I mean, really, you can see. You can just pull it apart with a fork if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm going to give monkey a nice big fork of this. And I'll get you turned around to her, monk. Hang on, I'm gonna turn you around here, or turn these guys around here so they can see you better. She loves her new bar school. Yes, they're so nice. <coughs> okay, Monk, give it a shot. See what you think. Mmm, that's good. Are they tender? Mm-hmm. All right, that's cool, huh? I got flavor. Well, I hope. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very good. Oh man. <laughs> My main concern was if they were tender enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, well, there you mm -hmm. go. Monkey, I'm sure, is going to get ready to, mm. to start um, start tearing into these things, huh? Mm-hmm. She's going to make her mom's plate for her, and I'm going to get mine. So, it should be pretty good. There's the vegetables in there in that pan. Okay. And I put some of that broth on to mm. the potatoes. So that's going to be good. I'm ready, ready, ready. All right, she's ready. So I'm going to say Shea Bear, the myth, the man, a legend. Go off for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Muck, anything you want to say? Mike, touch yourself for now. Okay. Well, there you guys go. It's real simple and easy. Just pull the membrane off the back of them things and season them how you want them. Throw them in a crock pot, throw them in, in one of these cast iron. These these don't have to be used on the fire. Mm -mm. You know, I didn't do it because I didn't know if it was going to rain. I didn't know it was a little breezy and then it wasn't. And it, it does go through a lot of charcoal. Mm -hmm. So I just threw them in the oven. 350 degrees, that's Fahrenheit. At uh, I cooked these for three hours. Two and a half hours, they would have been fine. I just wanted a, a little more tender. So you just throw your stuff in there, mm -hmm. walk away from it for a few hours. Yep. Yep. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you soon. Hopefully you have a great week coming up. And is that it, Mom? Yep. All right. We'll see you guys later. She's ready to eat. Bye-bye, guys, and take care.